Texas. Now are we well prepared to know the pleasure of our fair cousin, Dauphin. Your Highness, lately sending into France, did claim some certain dukedoms in the right of your great predecessor, King Edward III. In answer of which claim, the prince, my master, says that you savor too much of your youth. He therefore sends you, meter for your spirit, this ton of treasure. And in lieu of this, desires you let those dukedoms that you claim hear no more of you. This, the Dauphin speaks. What? Treasure, Uncle. Tennis balls, my liege. We are glad the Dauphin is so pleasant with us. He is present and your pains we thank you for. When we have matched our rackets to these balls, we will in France, by God's grace, play a set. Shall strike his father's crown into the hazard, and we understand him well. How he comes o'er us with our wilder days, not measuring what use we made of them. But tell the Dauphin, I will keep my state. Be like a king and show my sail of greatness when I do rouse me in my throne of France. And tell the pleasant prince, this mock of his hath turned his balls to gunstones, and his soul shall stand sore charged for the wasteful vengeance that shall fly with them. For many a thousand widows shall this his mock, mock out of their dear husbands, mock mothers from their sons, mock castles down. And some are yet ungotten and unborn that shall have cause to curse the Dauphin's school. So get you hence in peace and tell the Dauphin his jest will savor but of shallow wit when thousands weep more than did laugh at it. Convey them with safe conduct. Very well. This was a merry message. We hope to make the sender blush at it. Therefore, my lords, omit no happy hour that may give furtherance to our expedition. For we have now no thought in us but France. Save those to God that run before our business. Therefore, let every man now task his thought that this fair action may on foot be brought. I won, my lord. Your highness bade me ask for it today. So did you mean, my liege? And I, my royal sovereign. Then Richard, Earl of Cambridge, there is yours. There yours, Lord Scroop of Massam, and Sir Knight Dre of Northumberland, this same is yours. Read them, and know. I know your worthiness. My lord of Westmoreland, Uncle Exeter, we will aboard tonight. How now, gentlemen? What see you in those papers that you lose so much complexion? I do confess my fault, and do submit me to your highness' mercy. To which we all appeal. The mercy that was quick in us of late by your own counsel is suppressed and killed. You must not dare for shame to talk of mercy. 
for your own reasons turn into your bosoms as dogs upon their masters worrying you. See you, my princes and my noble peers, these English monsters. What shall I say to thee, Lord Scroop? Thou cruel, ingrateful, savage, and inhuman creature. Thou... <laughs> that didst bear a key of all my counsels, that knewest the very bottom of my soul, that almost mightst have coined me into gold, wouldst thou have practised on me for thy use. May it be possible that foreign hire could out of thee extract one spark of evil that might annoy my finger. It is so strange that though the truth of it stand off as gross as black and white, my eye will scarcely see it. So constant and unspotted didst thou seem that this thy fall hath left a kind of blot to mark the full fraught man and best endued with some suspicion. I will weep for thee, for this revolt of thine, methinks, is like another fall of man. I arrest thee of high treason by the name of Richard, Earl of Cambridge. Arrest thee of high treason by the name of Thomas Gray, Knight of Northumberland. I arrest thee of high treason by the name of Henry, Lord Scroop of Massam. Hear your sentence. You have conspired against our royal person, joined with an enemy proclaimed, and from his coffers received the golden earnest of our death, wherein you would have sold your king to slaughter, his princes and his peers to servitude, his subjects to oppression and contempt, and his whole kingdom into desolation. Get you, therefore, hence, poor, miserable wretches, to your death. The taste whereof God of his mercy give you patience to endure, and true repentance of all your dear offenses. <laughs> 